Yo, what's up? This is Giorgio Martini from Noise is King, and in this video, we're going to show you how to create some generative drum synth sounds with Ableton Live's operator and Max for Live. So, what we have over here is we have a drum rack, and each of the pads of the drum rack contain an instrument rack. And at the end of every instrument rack, we can see there is a device randomizer. So here we have another instrument rack, and at the end we have a, a randomizer. So all of these are instruments, they could be racks. Um, well, actually, they, they have to be instrument racks for, for this. Uh, for this to work because I'm going to show you in a moment. So we have all of these all these instruments and at the end the device randomizer. So when I press now play you're going to see that the beat is the same but the sounds mutate to different sounds on the fly by, by when I press the, the random key. So let's see how that sounds. So I'm going to press now the random key and so you see it's a totally different new sound. And here you can see how the the, 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 the the randomizer is working. And we create totally new drums uh, on the on the fly. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see how we actually would do this uh, ourselves. So as I said, we have this drum rack over here, and we have some, some instrument racks on each of the pads, and at the end we have this device randomizer. So let's go ahead and create one of these sounds from scratch. So I'm going to open a new live set. Uh, let's wait until this opens. And there it is. I'm gonna delete everything until I get only the drum rack. I open, I drag a new, brand new drum rack so that it is fresh new. And then I add an operator to one of the pads. Now I'm going to double click over here to create a clip and I'm going to draw some notes. So now we have our default operator here. Now we need to tell the operator, operator to somehow uh, uh, randomize all of its parameters or at least some of its parameters to create some interesting sounds. For that we're going to use this uh, device randomizer. You can find it in max for live and this is the URL for, for live 8 and over here is the, U the URL for live 9. So you download it and once you download it uh, we're you go where you have it and then you just dra drag and drop it just after the device that you want to randomize. So as you can see now, he has recognized here, it says operator, and he would now, if I press random, he's going to, to uh, randomize all of these parameters. And here you, you can see you have this on button, and if I turn it off, this would mean that this parameter, which in this case is the uh, the algorithm uh, parameter is not going to be randomized. If I turn it on, it is going to be randomized. I'm going to turn it off and you're going to see that this one is not going to be randomized, but all of the rest are going to be randomized. So let's see how that sounds. So I'm going to press random and you see it's moving all of the other parameters. And sometimes you get some, some it sounds but most of the times you don't because it's totally random and most of the times it's useless so what we need to do is I'm going to delete everything again I'm going to add a brand new operator and what we need to do is we need to group the uh, operator so we can do that by pressing Control uh, G or command G on the Mac or just right clicking and, pre and selecting group so now what we have done is we have uh, limited our options now we have here eight uh, parameters instead of all of these parameters so now we can go ahead and we um, oops we go ahead and we dra drag and drop the device randomizer not after the operator but after the group all right so and now you can see he has recognized it is an instrument rack and now you can see here he has uh, detected the macros and also for example the chain selector and the device on we're going to turn the device uh, the device on is off already by default but the chain selector is not and we want to turn this off because 
at least in this case, we don't want the chain selector to be randomizable. So now if I press random, you're going to see that all of these uh, macros are going to be randomly uh, set to a certain position. So let's see how that goes. So there it is. All right, so now that we have this working, we need, how do we get this, this drum, uh, generative drums? Well, we need to already have a base preset of a certain type of sound. In this case, let's do a kick. I'm going to really quickly do a, a kick pre preset. So I'm, I'm going to select here the first oscillator. I select, I said it's trigger mode to trigger and adjust the decay, something like this. And this sounds something like this. Now I'm going to turn the transpose all the way to minus 24. I'm going to turn the pitch envelope on and turn it to the maximum and also change the initial to 24 semitones and the peak also to 24 semitones. I'm also going to uh, modulate the, 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 the first oscillator via the second oscillator uh, and make the, the the decay a little bit shorter also change the the trigger mode to trigger I'm also going to turn on the filter and give it a little bit of distortion something like that and um, that's it well no actually I'm going to change the uh, algorithm and I'm going to put it in this this one which it means that it's Two, now we have two uh, sources of sound. So it's this one and this one. And uh, this one gets affected by this one and this one gets affected by this one. But A and B go in parallel. So I'm going to choose here in uh, A and C, I meant. And now we're going to uh, tell C to have a uh, noise um, source of sound. I'm going to make the decay a little bit shorter and the trigger mode set to trigger. So let's see how this sounds now. So that's our basic drum kick. We can make this as complicated as we want, for, but for this, uh, for, for this tutorial, we're just gonna stick with this. Um, so now here comes the, the part that makes the magic happen. Now we need to know which parameters can be moved around and still, uh, so that it still sounds like a kick. It may sound different, but it still sounds like a kick. So for example, I know that if I change this parameter, uh, it still sounds like a kick. It just sounds different, but it still sounds like a kick. So let's see how that sounds. So if I turn this guy down, so it still sounds like a kick, it's just less aggressive. And the same thing goes for many of these parameters. So I'm going to map, for example, this parameter to the first macro. I'm also going to map uh, this uh, this one, which is the the amount of the <coughs> sorry the amount of the noise of this oscillator to the second macro. I'm also going to map the time, and I'm going to map it to third macro, and I'm going to limit it to uh, minus ten uh, percent, something around there and uh, maximum to 100 is fine. Um, we are also going to uh, change, for example, the shaper type. So I'm going to select it here and then map it to the fourth uh, macro. And then uh, I'm also going to uh, map the transpose and I'm going to also uh, limit the transpose to minus 28. Uh, from minus 20, 28, oops, minus 28 to minus 20. Oops, there you go. All right, so now these parameters have been mapped. If I change any of this, the kick is still going to sound like a kick. It's just going to sound different. And I don't need to change this myself manually because I already have this random guy, which has, which is already affecting only from macro one to macro eight. So let's see how that sounds. All right. And if I press now random, it 
So this is basically the way you would do, you would make then you have one kick, then you would do a, a hi-hat, maybe a cymbal, maybe a snare, and then you would map the most interesting um, char characteristics of the, of the sound to the macros, and then those would be randomized by the device randomizer. So in the end, you could end up with something like this. I'm not going to save this. Um, there we go, and so for example you can add your operator and you can even, even add some effects and map those, like for example here the dry wet is, is being uh, mapped somewhere over here, and one thing that we that you have to do in order to change all of the parameters, all of the instruments at once, is that for example this random button is being, if you if you look over here in the key uh, on the mappings, you see it's mapped to the to the R uh, key. But this is the same for all of them. So this one has the 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 random uh, button mapped to the R key, but this one also. So all of them have uh, been mapped its random button to the to the key R. Uh, here you can see it should be also. There it is. So now every time I press R, every time I press R, all of these guys are going to change. You see? And um, if we if we play again, and then we press R, and let's say that you like. Maybe you like one of these sounds, like the kick maybe, for example. Say you like this kick really much and you want to save it. Well, what you would do is you would maybe rename it like something like my kick. And then um, you would just drag and drop it, whatever you want to save it. Let's say you want it in the desktop. So you would just go ahead and drop it there. So um, that's basically it for this tutorial. And you can use this technique also for making uh, bass sounds or lead sounds or other types of sounds and make them kind of uh, generative. So I hope you like the tutorial and uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions or, or if you do it something uh, cool with this uh, information. And thanks for watching and see you next time.